we're going to talk about graphing inequalities. We're going to first start with each symbol, and it's important to understand how you read each symbol. The way you read it will help you determine which way you graph a given inequality. So this inequality here is read as greater than. This one here is read as less than. And there are variations to this. Um, greater than also could be more than. Um, less than can also be fewer than. The terms I'm giving you right now are not going to be the only ones used. They're just going to be some of the most common ones. This one right here is greater than or equal to. It's also often called or used with the terms at least. And this one is less than or equal to. or at most. And again, there are more terms, but these are going to be the most popular ones typically. So when you have an inequality graphed on a number line, you're going to have a circle, um, just like you plot a point on a number line, but this time you're going to have sometimes an open circle or a closed circle. An open circle represents either of these two symbols, and it means that the number circled is not included in the so solution set. So if you have a closed circle, it's with either of these two symbols, and it's the opposite. It means the number circled is included. And so we've got our circle figured out. You have the terms for the symbols. Now we need to look at the arrow. So the direction the arrow points represents the solution set. Which is also all possible solutions. And it's important for you to understand that, you know, a number line, what you have in front of you is not infinite. Um, it's meant to be infinite for the arrows, but it's not infinite. So just because your line only extends to 10 on a number line, that doesn't mean that you only have the solution set up to 10. It means it's from this point and beyond. So let's look at this inequality right here. We're given x is greater than or equal to 3. So we're going to come to 3 and put a circle. And then I'm looking at my symbol, and it's greater than or equal to, which is right here. So I know I'm going to have a closed circle. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to close the circle in. And since x is greater than or equal to, that means my answers are going to be anything greater than, bigger than, larger than, to the right of 3. So this is how you would graph this inequality. And what this means is any number 3 or higher or greater or larger is a solution to this inequality. So then let's think about this. What happens if the direction of the symbol changes? And I'm going to change color. So if we have, instead of x is greater than or equal to 3, what happens if we have x is less than or equal to 3? So we're still going to have the same circle shaded in, except now the solution set is going to be all numbers less than, fewer than 3. So that shows you how simply the direction of the symbol affects what your graph looks like. Now what happens, so I'm going to erase this, what happens if the line underneath the symbol disappears? So let's say instead of x is greater than or equal to 3, we have x is greater than 3. And when I erased, it actually did this for me over here. It means... 3 is not included in the solution set. And here's how you can check that. If you're like, but it still says 3. Okay, well, if we put 3 in place of x right here, 
you end up with three is greater than three. And that's not a true statement. So that's why three is not included. That's why three is not, the circle is not shaded in. Previously, when you had greater than or equal to, three is greater than or equal to three. It's not greater than, but it's equal to. So that's why when you have the line underneath, that's why it is shaded in because it is also included in your solution. So you also can determine whether or not a given number makes an inequality true. And you can use, do that on a number line. So for example, is x is greater than six true if x is equal to negative six? Well, we're gonna draw just a super quick number line. So if you don't have um, a number line paper or anything like that at home, you can always just quickly sketch one out. And here's what I recommend doing. Pick zero in the center. You can estimate where 10 and negative 10 are, and then go halfway, and you can estimate where 5 and negative 5 are. And so then we'll add in 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is not perfectly spaced, but for your homework or for working at home, um, when you're just sketching things out, it's okay. So we want to know if x is greater than 6, greater than or equal to 6 is true if x is equal to negative 6. Well, step one is going to be to actually graph this inequality. So we're going to come over here and find 6. Greater than or equal to means it's shaded in. And again, greater than, so it's going to go this way. And we want to know, is negative 6 a true value for x? Does it make that inequality true? Well, negative 6 is down here. So if you look at that, you can see that negative 6 is not and will never be included in the solution set for the inequality when it is written as is. So a true statement occurs when the point falls within the solution set. So we'll write that here, when the point falls within the solution set. And a false statement occurs when the point is outside the solution set. So we can tell, we could be, just by looking at the graph, that this is a false statement. So that is not true. Negative 6 is not a solution to the inequality. X is greater than or equal to 6. So let's come down here and let's look at these um, questions here. Is 4 a solution of x is less than or equal to negative 2? So less than or equal to tells me that this is going to be shaded in right here. And less than or equal to means it's all numbers smaller than or equal to negative 2. So we want to know if 4 is a solution. Well, 4 is right here. 4 does not fall on that line, and with the way it is currently, it never will. So we will say, no, it is not a solution. Come over here. Is 3 a solution of x is greater than negative 4? Well, here's negative 4. It is not greater than or equal to, so it's going to be an open circle. Greater than means larger than, so we're going to come this way. So we want to know, is 3 a solution? Well, here's 3. 3 falls in that set on that line, so we can say that yes, it is a solution. So is 0 a solution of x is greater than or equal to 4? Greater than or equal to means a closed circle. Greater than means larger than, move this way. Is 0 a solution? No, it is not. All right, let's look down here. Um, I did skip this one, but I think we've practiced enough with that. Circle one number from the number line that makes x is greater than 3 true. So let's graph this first or plot this. Greater than 3, not greater than or equal to. So we just circle. Here's greater than. And if you were to circle any number that was true, you'd be able to circle any of these because all of those are true. 3 is not because it is not shaded in. So let's look over here. Circle one number from the number line that makes x is less than or equal to negative 1. Less than or equal to means a closed circle. Less than means your arrow goes this way. 
and then all possible solutions, any number that could be circled and be correct, are all of these. And this time we get to include negative one because it was less than or equal to. So I hope you found this helpful. And if at any point you need a little bit of an extra explanation or you need to hear something again, remember that you can rewind this video, you can pause it, um, and you can practice a little bit more if needed.